Hey, welcome! It's Brian, and this is Guitar Solo Reactions. Today we are back with the incredible Prince. He is live on SNL doing a song off the Batman soundtrack called Electric Chair. I personally love that record. I probably had four Prince records in my life, and if you've watched all my Prince content, it probably changes every time I say something, but, you know, Sign of the Times, the Batman soundtrack, um, what came after that, uh, Love Sexy, and then one other one that I can't remember. So, anyway, I love the Batman soundtrack. Did I love the movie? I believe it's the first movie. Um, yeah, it was pretty good. I remember liking it quite a bit. Uh, and the music is not a big part of that, but the actual record, when I bought it, I was like, man, this is some interesting composition that obviously was a complete creation by Prince, which is always the case, but it had those different elements, a lot of uh, samples and uh, stuff pulled from the movie. That part's a little dated, but the actual instrumentation, the composition stuff is really cool and unique. So anyway, here we go, electric chair. <laughs> Dance with on the time I was watching you. <laughs> yeah, the music rocked us. Our eyes like us, making us see a trippy picture shoot. <laughs> that little click he does with his mouth it's really interesting that's the second time he's done it and i don't i don't know if i've ever heard him do that before or whatever interesting guitar choices he's got the Rusan, which i'm kind of blanking a little bit but i think there's only a couple models that he had and it was just repainted and um that may be the case and i you know the entire guitar is that color meaning the headstock the fingerboard fretboard whatever you want to call it and um so that may be just i think there may be only two of them that he used correct me if i'm wrong i'm sure i've been corrected before but now you can actually buy uh, a guitar made by i believe his name's rusan and I just saw it advertised in a guitar magazine. And I knew that was coming, that he got rights to recreate the guitar officially. There has been others. There's lots of knockoffs. Um, but I think this might be the first official guitar you can buy um, uh, that looks like that guitar there. And it costs a lot of money. So. Oh, and then there's the one in the back. I'm forgetting what that one's called. That always bugged me. I don't know why, but um, Prince used that quite a bit on certain videos. He's got some really unique guitars, and I personally love, you know, I'll say it again, I love the Mad Cat. Great guitar, simplistic. 
you know, he used a telly early on, you know, really early. And then he moved to that and then had quite a few different guitars, but he had all these kind of specialty guitars. And it's not till he kind of got to using the Strat uh, style guitar with the AMG humbucker and then the single coil on the neck with the Floyd Rose. That's where I really, that's my favorite of his guitars. Then he used that Vox HD 770 towards the very end. So a lot of cool, unique guitars, but um, some of them more practical than others. So as far as Prince goes, I would call this, you know, a, a really good song, a great performance. Uh, the synchronized dancing stuff, I know early on or around this time, that was big for him. I love, as many of you know that have watched this channel for a couple of years now, love when he moves down to the more stripped version of the band, whether it was uh, with Third Eye Girl and or some combination of like a really like four or five piece band and kind of concentrating really on the guitar stuff uh the moves and stuff you know they move incredibly well i just can't imagine being like the backup bass player and guitar player uh doing all those moves and trying to play the stuff now when they're doing that they're just kind of doing that vamp that kind of groove part of it but still like you know if you've messed up Prince would be pissed, you know, like if you weren't completely synchronized, which they were. So that takes a ton of practice. And then to execute musically on such a high level, um, you know, that's, that's like basically you dedicated your life to them. And, um, you know, I mean, that's a, a, an individual's choice, obviously, to go, you know, I'm going to work with one of the most amazing living composers at that time. And uh, I'm going to do everything I can do to not fail him, you know, or or upset him. You know, that's an interesting position to be as like a prince or, you know, whoever else would kind of fall into that category, you know, um, where you have this appeal to musicians who um, do want to do nothing else but present your music as best they can and do exactly what you want. Um, I can't imagine that as a musician, to be honest. Um, but, you know, the I'll say Frank Zappa again. And, you know, I'm sure there's many pop people that are that demanding and, uh, you know, want perfection all the time. And to be honest, Prince um, really executed that uh, quite a bit. And 
Then, as we all know, the after hour shows is where he kind of let loose. And it's so amazing to have that dichotomy between the shows, especially around this time, how precise they are, all of the chore- um, choreography that goes along. I'm not just saying dancing, but the whole show, the whole synchronization of it. And, you know, all the signals that he used and all of that stuff where people stopped on the dime. And you can imagine if they didn't, what it would be like. But, um, and then to have, you know, I don't know when he started doing the after show stuff. Um, maybe it was around here. Maybe it was later. I don't know. But I still know he had that kind of perfectionist approach to shows to the end. But then those after hour shows where you can tell they're he's doing Hendrix and stuff that he wouldn't necessarily do during the main show. He would really stretch out and the other players would as well. And, you know, obviously there weren't as that uh, most of the time, I don't remember a lot of backup singers and the stuff I've heard and seen, but it would be a stripped down version of the band and you'd really get a cool experience. I've never experienced that. I never saw Prince live. Um, you know, so uh, the only chance I think I did would have been on, um, I mean, a long time ago when I was probably 14, someone invited me to go to uh, a show at the Toledo Sports Arena and it would have been maybe the first record, something like that. So anyway, um, I'm Brian. I love Prince. It's been a while since I've done any. Um, not that I haven't wanted to, but, uh, just how things work, I guess. So, uh, I appreciate if you came back to check this out. And if you're new to the channel, um, lots of Prince material, probably over 150 videos, of Prince reactions and stuff like that. So anyway, I'll see you soon.